Holy sh**. Didn't expect to see your protege again after- What happened to you? Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is the 31st MCU movie, in which everyone's favorite ant-oriented Marvel superhero gets sucked down to the mysterious quantum realm to do things we all love to see. Things like wandering around aimlessly and stumbling into quirky half-characters without real substance and being hit on by living broccoli. So what's your story then? And as a whole, Quantumania is another not-so-good new MCU entry to add onto the list, probably one of their worst so far. There are things to laugh at, sure, but even those, mostly for the wrong reasons. It's basically Marvel's own Black Adam and Shazam 2. By far the biggest reason for its failure being that it's a shameless cash grab. And before I unleash the rage of the MCU fanbase too much, let me explain. The reason Ant-Man Quantumania is a cash grab is because it's not an Ant-Man movie so much as it is another Marvel movie that happens to feature Ant-Man. It wasn't made because the filmmakers thought there's more to be done with this character and more to explore with this world. No, it was made because Marvel is a machine in need of another movie and Ant-Man is one of the established characters they have left and the Quantum Realm is another mandatory CGI world they can put him in. That's literally how the project began. With Marvel, I don't know how it works with every project, but like they knew they wanted to do something in the quantum realm. They wanted to do a complete tonal shift from the other two. So they wanted more of like a sci-fi quantum realm adventure. And then they wanted potentially to use Kane the Conqueror as the villain. And because of that, no matter how much fun Quantumania may be for some or how cool it may look to others, it doesn't matter. The movie could never survive the fact that it shouldn't exist, that the cash grab aspect poisons everything here. Ant-Man the character isn't Ant-Man anymore, Ant-Man the movie isn't an Ant-Man movie anymore, and the whole thing basically exists just to serve the new villain in a superficial manner. And so today, what I thought would be useful to do is to look at Quantumania through this cash grab lens and try to understand why it's Ant-Man in name only, why exactly its hero and content and point of existence are ruined. Not only to learn why it failed, but also to know what to look out for with your own movie. Because honestly, it feels like this was made by a DC double agent working at Marvel. Which, believe it or not, may not be too far from the truth. Because the couple low-ranking people I know at Warners have told me that there is an ex-DC Warners person now pulling the strings at Marvel. A person you have heard of. So even though it may get me in trouble, I'm gonna do a Filmento exclusive expose of who that is. At the end though, because I don't want to get in too much trouble and because in order for that expose to make sense, my cash grab argument has to make sense first. So here's why Quantumania is a cash grab and how to not make your project the same. Without that, we're nothing! Firstly, the reason Ant-Man the character isn't Ant-Man anymore is because he has lost his defining personal specificity, to the point of becoming a blank shell with a gimmick used for whatever Marvel wants. To introduce what I mean, look at the beginning, where you may notice that the things that made Scott Lang Scott Lang don't exist anymore. He's basically just a guy living his life with the added fact that he's Ant-Man, with people loving him for saving the world with the Avengers, and with other people confusing him with Avengers, and basically every scene being about him being a hero in the MCU. Why are you time traveling with Captain America? Will I be there when the Avengers need me? Absolutely. How did the Hulk turn me into a baby? Wouldn't fight Captain America. Not insane. Which can be funny and kind of the point here, but it also leaves Scott himself empty. Because what exactly is it that separates him as a person from the noise of all the other MCU heroes? That he's funny. Well, others are funny, plus many other things. That he's an ordinary guy pulled into a crazy situation. Well, others are that, plus many other things. As a whole, Scott as a person has nothing to distinguish himself from all these other people, aside from the things he lacks that they have, with the exception of being Ant-Man. And to bring context to this, even though Scott was never the standout MCU character, he initially had these specific aspects about him that made him him. He was an ex-con master thief who struggled to make things right with his distant daughter and who had to steal something to fix things. That's what separated him from the pack. My days of breaking into places and stealing sh** are done. What do you want me to do? I want you to break into a place and steal some sh**. 
Whereas here, all that is gone. He's not a thief stealing anything or a dad needing to fix things with his family or in any real meaningful way involved with the law. He's pretty much just Paul Rudd being Paul Rudd with the added fact that he has this gimmick of being Ant-Man. And the main issue this lack of defining personal specificity creates is that it leaves Scott without purpose and thus the story purposeless. He's like a stick in a river carried wherever Marvel wants the river to go. He happens to be shrunk down to the quantum realm by someone else. He happens to be attacked by creatures down there. And then he happens to be captured by the locals and then captured by the villain's henchmen and taken to the villain. Nothing about the story is driven by or even dependent on the fact that Scott is the hero. The hero could be anyone. Put Scott on vacation and give his suit to someone else and the story would still function mostly the same. We can help each other with Ant-Man. Because as is typical with cash grab stories, the main hero doesn't matter. The movie isn't made because of them, but instead just to be made. And to be fair, the writers seem very aware of this, since when Scott meets the villain, Kang, he's instructed to steal something for him. And now it's like, yes, finally, now Scott Lang being Scott Lang actually matters, great. Except, of course, it's just fairy dust. When I steal something, I usually know what I'm stealing. It was a multiversal engine core. Then Janet blew it up. Right, so essentially, the villain wants Scott to dive into his ship's blown up engine to shrink it back down so he can use it. Which is not stealing. Stealing is taking something from someone without permission. It's breaking into someone's house or walking into a store to... Whereas diving down into a CGI space to help someone with a problem is not that. Which again makes it painfully obvious that Master Thief Scott as a person has no value in the story and that the story isn't in any way built on him, aside from the fact that he has this gimmick of being Ant-Man. And so the point is that the only way to avoid being a cash grab on the character side is if there's defining value left in the main character to explore. Whereas with Scott Lang, that well here is already dry. Whatever purpose Scott once had has already been served at the beginning, to the point where by the end, nothing about him has even significantly changed. Clearly, Scott is in this movie only because he's Ant-Man and because Ant-Man is a property Marvel can use to make a movie, which they did. If you look at Scott's daughter, for example, her core being here is all about being sort of anti-establishment and standing up for the little guy. Kind of hard to see through all that tear gas you fired into the park full of peaceful protesters. And so if you were to make a movie with her, it can't then be about her using the Ant-Man suit to stop a new super-powered serial killer or something. You don't need her for that. No, the story has to be built on who she is and the gimmick should evolve along with it. Oh, a government agency is tracking and spying on ordinary people with new technology, so she figures out a way for people to hide their IP address and keep their files safely encrypted. But I cannot see I'm legally blind. Oh, the government is geolocking websites and streaming content based on region to oppress and divide people, so she finds a way to circumvent those locks and access everything everywhere, all by using PIM technology to create this blue button. That would be a story and a movie built on her. Yeah, I'm thinking. <laughs> Oh, and the blue button is real, by the way. So if you want to safely encrypt your internet data and change your IP to anywhere in the world to surf the web without being seen by governments and hackers and internet providers and unlock all region-divided content in all major streaming services, which you should be doing, get it for yourself. It's called Private Internet Access, the new best evolved VPN, which protects millions of users worldwide without storing any of their data with servers in 84 countries and in each US state. Right now, you you can get it for 83% off with 4 free months with the link below. You can protect an unlimited amount of devices at the same time with just one subscription and there's even a 30 day money back guarantee, so check it out. Secondly, the reason this isn't even a proper Ant-Man movie is because most of its content doesn't require it to be an Ant-Man movie and could instead be done with countless other properties. For context, the thing that made the first movie special was the fact that what happened could happen only because it's Ant-Man where the hero can shrink down. Scott was writing and developing a relationship with an ant. Stop speeding, 
He was running from everyday items in massive form like water in a tub. He was fighting inside a briefcase and even on a child's playset. All this was possible only in an Ant-Man movie. Probably mostly thanks to Edgar Wright who was a big Ant-Man fan and understood how to make it special. <laughs> Whereas in Quantumania, all that is gone. There are no ant relationships or interactions with everyday items in a new way or anything like it. Mostly, there's just generic superhero stuff. And the main culprit behind that is the idea to set this movie in the quantum realm, which may be the single worst idea in the MCU so far, most likely made by the ex-DC person. <laughs> Simply because it makes this being an Ant-Man movie redundant. Look at the story and the plot in a broad sense, for example. Scott's daughter has built this device sending a signal to the quantum realm and then someone uses it to shrink Scott and his family down there, which could happen with anyone as the hero. It could be that Iron Man is checking up on Scott's family while Scott is on holiday and then he'd get shrunk down with them and do the same stuff. He would use his armor to fight whatever creatures are there. He'd get captured by the locals and then by the villain and he'd be coerced by the villain and ultimately fight his army with the locals at the end. Mostly, this movie could be called Iron Man Quantumania and be the same, which defeats the purpose of it actually being Ant-Man Quantumania. And to be fair, I understand the Quantum Realm choice. Hey, Ant-Man's thing is that he gets small, so let's make a movie where he goes to this small world. I get it. But the actual effect is the opposite. Now that Ant-Man is in this small world, it just takes away from the fact that he can become small. Like, when everything and everyone is small, it kind of by default means that nothing and nobody, you know. Everyone can be small. And when everyone's small, <laughs> no one will be. <laughs> and even though Scott can still adjust his size compared to his new surroundings, not much can be done with it because it's basically an alien world without a familiar conception of size. There are no everyday items that can be used in a new way by playing with their proportions. The proportions are all over the place anyway. Which is why pretty much the only time Ant-Man's abilities come in play is in combat. Whoopie doo. To highlight this better with some contrast, there are a couple exceptions, a couple scenes and moments where this being Ant-Man factors in. Moments like Scott's daughter shrinking down into a vent to escape the floating head. Moments like Hank Pym's ant showing up to save the day. Those moments are good, but maybe they should have lasted a bit longer than one second and been used for more than just one Ant's Ex Machina twist. Apparently they passed through some sort of time dilation. They live thousands of years in a single day. The biggest exception though is the quote-unquote stealing scene where Scott dives into the villain's blown up engine to shrink it down. Now, yes, there are some nonsensical derogatory aspects here as well. Why does Scott have to shrink down to an engine that's been made massive and what's with the arbitrary cloning stuff? Fair enough. But that aside, this scene is still, if not the best, then at least the most deserving scene in the movie, simply because it's an Ant-Man scene that can happen only in an Ant-Man movie. Basically, once Scott gets a grip on his sanity, he and his clones start to pile up and work together to get up to the engine to save Scott's daughter. As in, Scott and his clones are functioning like... Exactly. <laughs> Now, maybe I'm hyping this up a bit too much, but the point is that this is a scene you want to look for in your movie. Instead of building whatever generic scenes that any movie could do, use the specialty of your movie to do things that no one other than you can do. The only way an Ant-Man movie isn't a cash grab is if it's actually built with the fact that it's an Ant-Man movie. Thirdly, the reason Quantumania is a cash grab is because it shamelessly uses Ant-Man's value to generate value for something that isn't Ant-Man. 
Like I already mentioned, Scott Lang has no purpose or agency here. He gets shrunk down by someone else and taken prisoner by someone else and brought to the villain by someone else and then used by the villain. He's a plastic bag in the wind. He's not in the driver's seat doing stuff so much as he gets driven along to react to weird stuff. I am Feb, you just drank me. <laughs> I did, what? without any real sense of where he is or even what's going on. Mostly, this whole movie seems to be about something or someone else. There are these constant ominous references to someone, with the mom freaking out about the quantum realm. There's something I should have told you. And with multiple characters talking about, quote unquote, him. He will burn the world to find you. You didn't tell them about him. And now all he needs is you. Yeah, so quickly it becomes clear that Ant-Man is playing second fiddle to the new big bad of the MCU, Kang. We learn about Kang's backstory of being exiled and trapped, Kang's motivations of dimensional domination, Kang's actions of pushing the plot by pushing others. Pretty much everything here revolves around Kang. Which, in of itself, isn't a bad idea. You want to build up your new villain, yeah. But the problem is that it's done via someone else's movie, which just ends up ruining both sides. Ant-Man is ruined because in his own movie, he's reduced to being a passive vessel existing mostly for someone else. Like, why do you call it Ant-Man Quantumania and put him in the center if he's not the center, if this is what you actually want it to be? Oh yeah, because you're using this property to advance something totally else. And on the other hand, Kang is ruined because the movie doesn't go all the way and actually put him in the center either. Either. Aside from short backstory moments, we don't even meet him in person until much later on, and even then, always from outside in. We get a sense of his history and intention, sure, but never through his eyes. Apparently, he was exiled for being a bad guy, but we don't really get to see why. Apparently, he wants to destroy timelines to stop something bad, but we don't really get to see what. He never grows beyond the shallow, ominous references surrounding him. I saw the chaos. And I will burn if you want to stop out what's of coming. Time. You have no you idea what, to me. what I have lost. We don't care. Let me tell you. <laughs> The result of which is this lacking middle road where the hero isn't allowed to be the hero and where the villain is too shallow to carry the load either, to the point of becoming yet another mandatory blue marble CGI power villain trying to end the universe. Which may make him cool, but at this point, not much more. And to explain this further, I'll give you a successful example on both sides. Even though the Joker in The Dark Knight steals the show, the movie is always Batman's movie. Batman is doing things which prompts a situation leading to the Joker's rise. Put word out, we hired the clown. Batman and his actions are always at the center. It's always anchored in what he thinks and chooses. Whereas in Infinity War, even though it's an Avengers movie, Thanos is the central character. The movie begins and ends with him. It shows scenes from his perspective in addition to him speaking about his perspective. It goes all in on the choices and sacrifices he has to make to get what he's after. I'm sorry, little one. Girl. The audience may not agree with Thanos, but they are brought into his head to view the world from the angle he views it from. And in this manner, you have to decide which way to go and go all the way. If you want this to be an Ant-Man movie, then keep Ant-Man at the center by making him cause things to happen and by making it be about him instead of reducing him into a spectating role in his own movie. Or if you want this to be Kang's movie, then actually go into his perspective and make the audience see him from inside out, instead of reducing him to a set of references spouted out verbally. Because otherwise, it's quite clear that you're using this thing with inherent value to generate artificial value for something that may or may not have true value later on. It's quite clear that what you're making is a cash grab existing so that your machine can keep running and your bank account can keep filling. Oh, and yeah, I promised to expose that DC double agent pulling the strings at Marvel. Right. Then again, simply by using that topic I got you watching this far, so meh. Maybe I'll talk about it more in some other video later on, if ever. For now though, to make sure you don't get exposed, don't forget to check out private internet access.